Hello everyone, this is another review video I'm reviewing an object sent to me, uh, but I'm sharing it because this object doesn't really have any proprietary design, simple design, and I think it can help a lot of people with similar issues. There's a lot of um, uh, simple things to explain here. So let's get started. So the problem first reported is that if you take, uh, you try to um, use chamfer or fill it, it gives you a message, the object has non-manifold edges. Okay, so why is this non manifold? What is wrong with this object? So, first off, what I usually do, I turn on the back face coloring. And if you see over here, this these faces are actually flipped. So, I try to use flip normals, and this gives me a message failed to flip normals because non manifold geometry. So, basically, this is completely non manifold. So, first, step for a minute to talk about this flip normals. You can anytime flip normals by selecting faces and flipping them. It doesn't have to be manifold for that. But if you want the tool to automatically detect anything that is flipped and flip it back, it needs to rely on having a proper volume. And if it's an interrupted volume on manifold, it cannot detect that. It doesn't really need to be like watertight in that sense, like fully closed. It could be object is open, but it needs to have a flow that it's, it can detect a flow. So this usually means there's something either self-intersecting or somehow um, self-intersecting even, not always. Uh, it's not like so um, um, particular, but needs to be something that can flow. And this shows something that it's something wrong with the geometry. So what is wrong? So actually it turns out it's simply, it's a group. And a group kind of depends on which tool you're using. And most of these tools that you go, and, and some tools will treat it as a single object. But in most of these tools, if you give it to, it treats it like a single object. Uh, and I mean, some of them will treat it like individual objects, but some of them will treat it as a single object. And if, if it's a single object, it's not combined with something like the Stitch and Scoop tool, which is also known as Union Boolean tools, um, or the Union within the Boolean tools. This will become um, non-manifold because there's a lot of extra faces and missing cuts and so on. So. Uh, without explaining, I guess you can see it immediately. So this object is quite nice and clean. There's no cuts here, nothing. This doesn't cut down here. This doesn't cut in here. And there's also a lot of extra faces. So let me just ungroup them and be able to see what's going on. So if you take a look, this is made of a lot of individual objects. So if I, for example, um, isolate this, you see this has over here a face, or actually two triangular faces, that it's still here. And if you look at it over here, um, show all. this object has also faces over here so this needs to first make a cut inside to this object and then combine over here and, and do something like this and the same would be with all of them so anyways that's basically the issue here so once I have them um, ungrouped I can select this object and I can go to let's select just one object this object and then go to flip normal and it fix it perfectly fine because the object themselves have no issue the problem was that we're grouped together uh, making them non-manifold as a group. Now, once I combine them all together, I can go and use Stitch and Scoop. Now, before you use Stitch and Scoop, I just want to show you that if you're going to um, use chamfer or fillet on these faces, so let's say I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to use fillet, um, it actually can work quite nicely, and you have no issues. But once, So maybe it may be a better idea to first do the fillet and everything, and then um, merge them together. So I'll show you this is just one option. I want to show you soon because we will have some issues here that we'll have to talk about. So once I select all of these objects together, I can go to Stitch and Scoop, and they are combined perfectly fine. Uh, before combining them, I just want to show you that if the object is flipped normal, we'll have a problem with Stitch and Scoop as well. So let's flip it back to normal. And now if we're going to go Stitch and Scoop, you're going to see the union over here is not going to give me the correct results also. And the reason here is the same idea, because this it works based on volume, and this volume is kind of like flipped inside out, uh, so it gets confused, it doesn't really know what the volume is. So if I uh, basically undo this, and it's completely, um, each object is perfectly fine, um, you know, the right orientation does not flipped, and everything is fine, you can use the union to combine them. But once you use the union to combine them, see what's happening here. This actually makes the cut over here. You can see it cuts here, it cuts over here. You can see over here, there's a cut going to here. Everything must be connected in order to be manifold. But it's done in an ugly way. So many triangles and so on, which is, first of all, it doesn't look nice. 
but secondly, it will create a lot of um, problems. So I'll show you soon. First, I'm going to show you how you can remove that. So I go to resolution tool and I can make it to zero. And if you do it to zero, it already tries to remove and it removes a lot. So first of all, I can already use the chamfer and filler tool on things like this over here. So I'm going to use over here this, or, or maybe you want to chamfer and fill out all of them, so I can take this entire face, and I can do, actually it's not a good idea, because this needs to be the other side, um, let me show you, so I'll take this over here, and this over here, and if you try to use fill it now, um, you will need to use a negative one, so you see, this works, but it goes outside here, that's not what you want, and this is where you have an advanced setting, the option to go negative, so I'll go minus 0.5, and you can see now it actually gives me a nice bevel the way it's expected. So this will basically solve this. But if you're trying now to go with the, these faces, you'll be stuck a little bit because of these extra edges over here. So before um, I, I continue, I want to explain the problem here, what we can have, what the problem is. So if I take a basic cube, for example, something like this, and I try to bevel, let's make sure it's select the cube, and I try to bevel just one edge, okay, I should be able to do that 50%, uh, about 50% of the object. So the object is 100 size, I can do it 49, uh, that's basically it. If I stretch the object, let's say it's not uh, cubic, different sizes, um, I can have different flexibilities, let's say if I want to move this out and kind of make it big. Um, if I do it the simple way, I will still be limited to 49, okay, actually 48 it gives it to me now, okay, it's a little less than half, um, but I have a setting over here to go percentage base, and in percentage base it will allow me to do more, um, actually, oh, I did the entire object, okay, I'm sorry, so that's why I select the entire face, that's why it gives me different behavior, okay, so if I do now just this edge, same as before, um, depending what I do. So if I do without percentage base, uh, length, it still gives me the same idea. If I do percentage base, it still shows me 49 because that's the shortest side, but it allows me to go till about half on this side as well because it's not forced to divide them equally, but if you do length, it means it needs to be the same length here and here, so it's limited. But then it's not, not to go get sidetracked about this idea, but let me just show you what will happen if I add some details to the object. So I'm gonna add another cube here that I'm going to create something like, let's say a basic cube and adding, let's say some segments, um, let's say something like this, okay. So if I need to um, chamfer or fill at this, let's say a basic bevel, which is like chamfer. If I need to do a basic chamfer, um, and let's see if I can do it manually, what will happen? So if I do something like this, and push it in, you see, till I get to about 50%, about half flat, till this is flat, this everything is fine, no problem. Once I start going more, look at how you see these faces, um, it's kind of looks, it shows like inside out. And this is basically because the object starts breaking, it starts self-intersecting. Um, so basically you're limited to what you can do without breaking the object. It's the same idea if I'm gonna cross over to this edge. So let's say if I'm gonna move it in, across over this edge, look what's happening. So so basically the idea here is that you're limited not to cross over in any edge. Um, so you're limited to basically what you have. So if you think about an object like this, you will have these edges here that's gonna be standing in your way. And here, some also small edges, that in some places you'll be limited and not able to bevel that much. So you saw how much I was able to bevel before I combined them. Let's compare it to what I can do now. Now I can do much less because this starts breaking here and, and it limits me basically what I can do. I can do very little over here, what I can do. So the easiest solution here is actually to use another object. So I can use another object with the same size. So this is like 100 by 42 by 33. So let's say I make another object by, I can make it default, okay. 100 by 42 by 33. So I have an object like this and I can take this object and use fill it by as much as I want. So let's say, let's make it to eight and let's make this a nice 
also let's say eight by eight. So this is nicely done. And now I select both of these objects and I'm gonna go to stitch and scoop and use the intersection option. And voila, look how nicely this is cut. So basically I use the Boolean tool to cut by combining two objects and cutting it out this way, it's very nice. You can do the same thing with the inside one. You can create an object inside and then using Boolean difference to cut out the inside part. So basically the Boolean tool could be used as a way of doing it, but instead of manually figuring out around it, you just take a separate object and you bevel that object that has no limitations and then you do it. Now another way is to use drawings. Let me bring back the original object and just to show you. Bring back the original object that I got without anything. And I'm just going to select all of these faces here. So I'm selecting these faces. Actually, I don't need... Um, yeah, maybe I do need it. Let's see. So I can select these faces and move down to edges based. Okay, so I'm selecting these edges. And I make a copy. So I'll make a copy of it. And let me isolate this. Okay, so once I have these edges, I'll go actually to geometry clean to remove extra stuff. Okay, so I got this. Now this is the basic shape. Now you can draw this. I just use this, I like to copy paste kind of uh, type of stuff, but you can basically simply draw this object. And over here, actually, you're going to need another piece up. So again, being a little lazy to draw them, I'm just going to use here an option to add a vertex over here. And now I'll select this edge and extrude. Oops. Something like that. Whatever value this was. And now delete this face over here. Okay, so let's say I've drawn this from scratch. I've drawn this object. Now I can start using these faces over here, everything that I wanted to bevel, and maybe even these faces, whatever I need to bevel. I can kind of go and use now the fillet tool and make it really, really nice, whatever I want. Maybe you want to keep this sharp, you can make just the insight, um, select only this, let's say, whatever you need to bevel. But now the idea, main idea here is that you're not limited to anything because right now you have basically no faces that, that blocked you. You can do whatever you need. And once I have this, I can go and make fill polygons, for example, uh, fill it, and now I can add thickness to it. So say negative 100. So I have the basic object, look how nice this is done, and you can bevel any, anything, uh, all of the edges you need. But you're only limited in this approach to what was represented in the profile. So this corner over here, that's basically already added the thickness, was not represented. So this you'll have a problem. So in these cases, what you do is you kind of work first on 2D and whatever you can do in 2D. And then you do the same trick I said before, where you create a new shape, this basic shape. And then you use the combination of this tool. So I'm going to use here, let's say this, and now plus this object and use this tool intersection. And look how nice this object looks. Let's see what it is. It's hard to see. Let's isolate them. Profile blocks. So this is basically... Okay, this wasn't uh, smooth enough. I'm sorry. So let me just undo this. Okay, let's go back to fill it. I made it 8, but forgot to change this. Let's make this also 8. 8 by 8. Okay. So now, let's do it. And let's isolate this. Okay, now let's look. This is nicely cut here, nicely cut inside, all over. So basically this is kind of the idea how I would do something like this. Um, but yeah, but also I wouldn't make this from multiple objects. I would kind of use extrusion to do this, but it doesn't matter how you do it. Um, but yeah, I think um, the short thing here is that um, uh, you can use much better uh, chamfer and fillet on profiles and on an object because the object already has faces and it gets limited based on the structure and the second thing here is that things that are not you cannot do with profiles because kind of like the, the 3d part um, you can just just use separate objects and then work with them 
Okay, I hope this is helpful and uh, let me know if you want me to try anything else. Thank you. Bye.